Portions of this podcast are made possible through the patronage of great people like At Lonely Bob Big Albie And Goldafish Since we are trying to grow our podcast in every way possible even if you can't be a patron You can still help us grow by liking, commenting and subscribing to the podcast Also you can show your support by proudly placing our Vices Interimo sticker where everyone can see it Send me your address in a private message and I will mail you your very own sticker anywhere in the world free of charge. My email is madsaxon, with two x's at yahoo.com. That's m-a-d-s-a-x-x-o-n at yahoo.com. Thanks for your support. It means a lot. Welcome to the Vices in Caramel 30 Minutes to Kill podcast. You are listening to the Vices Interimo Show, 30 Minutes to Kill. More or less. The incredible podcast with the unpronounceable name. We are a horror entertainment podcast featuring mostly spoiler-free discussions of horror, suspense and psychological thrillers. I am your horror host, Michael Mad Saxon Jones here with my lovely wife Lori. The show is usually broken up into four parts. Laid to rest, where we tie up loose ends from earlier shows. Followed by our featured movie review. Garbage in Garbage Out, is where we talk about anything we have watched seen online or even read since the last show. Lastly we always try to end the show with the crawling chaos. A topic or factoid we have never talked about on the show before. Sometimes silly sometimes serious but always chaotic. You are listening to the Vices and Terramo show. But you already knew that. What you may not know is this is episode... 328, and it's A Quiet Place from 2018. In fact, this is still in the theaters. In fact, this is an on-the-road episode. Well... It is, but we're at home right now. <laughs> partially on the road. Portions of this show were recorded on Earlier the road. Earlier for, for later broadcasts, exactly. Yes. Uh, so it's going to be... Well, it's going to be what it is. Do you have anything jumping right in for late to rest? I don't think so. Don't think so? Nothing? We would well, last movie was American Satan. Uh, I do, I do know that the Crawling Chaos video that I promised I would put up, the link and all that, I was never able to find it again. So we put up, we put up a different... Uh, actually, we didn't. You put the sound in. Uh-huh. But... Yeah. It wasn't the specific one you were... It wasn't. Okay. Because, yeah, I talked about a a guy out in the woods recording a terrifying sound. But um, I wanted to put that video up, but I can't find it now. That's sad. Yeah. All right. Sorry. (laughs) Uh. (laughs) Right. Well, at any rate, uh, let's just get right into... A quick synopsis of A Quiet Place, and then we'll hear our review.
post-apocalyptic world, a family is forced to live in silence while hiding from monsters with ultra-sensitive hearing. Well, that's it in a nutshell. It is. The, um, I remember seeing the trailer for this. Right. Not quite knowing what to make of it, but it looked like it was pretty promising. And, well, you'll hear what we had to say immediately after watching the film. Yeah. All right. A quiet place. A quiet place. Because we're being serenaded by Bananarama. Is that what's going on back there? I don't know. Who is this singing? Yeah, that's Bananarama. That's Bananarama. All right. Anyhow. A uh, quiet place. What did you think? I liked it. You liked it? I did. All right. Hang on to this, if you would, please. Right, Is that because so. you're driving and don't want to go off the road? Yeah, I'd prefer not to hit anybody up here in PV. <laughs> <laughs> but if so. we were in a poor area, it would yeah, be okay. Yeah, I'd just be mowing people <laughs> down right. left and right. I was just but. making sure. All right. That's how I roll. Wow. Uh, Death Race 2000. Anyhow. Um, what would you think of it? I thought it was good. I, I conflicted. I, I'm mad and I want to give it a low score because... What? Of all the, the horror, doing a little quotes here, horror movies that I've seen, like this is the only one where I would not have survived. Okay. I suddenly realize how fragile my existence would be. Yeah, the, I yeah, I was halfway through. I was so over it. I was like, yeah, I'd be the person out in the yard just screaming my head off. Come and get me, because I'm over it. So it's been... Um, but we also don't have children. This is true. This is true. I mean, they were a family, and their number one priority was not seeing their children be killed. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, true enough. You and well, I would probably just go for a walk and sing a song and... Well, I mean, I would have... I would have... I would have think I would have <laughs> gone out fighting in this, but uh, anyhow, yeah. so at this point, we've probably already read the synopsis, and I think the movie's been out long enough now that... Uh, yeah. Most folks have seen it. I've seen lots of uh, positive reviews on other podcasts, though I didn't listen to any of oh, them okay. because it seemed generally well received. Um, well, I know amongst just friends and family, yeah, um, it was kind of polarizing. Really, it, I it, it was like it was either stupid or it was really good. Um, well. This is... one, one of my sisters went with her children and some of their friends, and it was like a half and half kind of thing. Oh, okay. It's a few of them thought them. it was totally dumb, and yeah, but the other half thought it was really good. Okay, well, so it's one of those. It's one of, well, it's a thinking person's movie. I mean, it's not uh, nonstop action <laughs> from the beginning to end. Are you saying the ones that thought it was stupid are not thinkers? I guess what I'm saying <laughs> is not necessarily that. Yeah. It's uh, yeah, I know. okay, yeah, you know what I mean. It's it's a movie that you have to take your time and well, have an experience it. Yes, and after the film was over, they actually did a little making of thing. I was almost tempted to boot like that. Of- Oh. I was just going to hit the recorder. Record it. Yeah, but anyhow. Um, well, the writer-director... Mm-hmm. Emily Blunt's husband, I guess. I, I guess so. All right. He kept calling her his wife. <laughs> um, Not just on screen. She was his wife in the movie. Yeah. He was the writer-director and the one of the stars. Yeah. Um, which makes you automatically leery, but this... what? Don't be afraid. This was a quality film. Yeah. Um, but he said that... He didn't want to write a horror movie. He was going to write a movie about a family. And, you know, if their circumstances scared you or whatever, then his job he, was done. Then he had done a good job. Yeah. Yes. Well, that's absolutely um, what it was, I think. Um, well, and he also said he wanted to, you know, he wanted you to care about the family. Because if you cared about the family, cared about what happened to them, you could really enjoy the film. Um, so maybe if you're the people who thought it was stupid, maybe they were just waiting for carnage and horrible, uh, maybe they were looking for a horror movie. Maybe they should have seen Deadpool. Maybe instead. they didn't care about the, maybe they didn't care about the family. Okay. Maybe. Uh, so what you're I'm You're saying Deadpool main, is main, horror? No, I'm saying main, no, mainstream. You oh, know, okay. Wider. Yeah. 
well, talk Baser about low humor. Brow. Okay, well, there we go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Why are we comparing Deadpool with A Quiet Place? Because I'm going to take you to see it, and I'll have they're to buy you a couple of hot dogs. They're in two different worlds. All right. No, uh, I'm not spending money on Deadpool. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, anyway, we're talking about a quiet place. A quiet place. Um, um, I really loved that they decided to keep the music and sound effects and things down to a minimum. Right. Um, the writer, director, star. He. Yep. Too bad I don't know his name. Right. Yeah. He, um, he said that you know originally they were going to have more soundtrack and more you know sounds piped in or whatever. But he realized after just watching the raw footage of just the natural sounds of the wind and the forest and the... The barn even said. Yeah. Know, so... He, he loved that so much. Well, that person drives like a jackass. <laughs> yes, he did. Um, but yes, I'm, I'm glad because I, I can only remember two parts in the whole movie that had a little bit of uh, music mm -hmm. ba background. Right. Um, but it didn't... It wasn't overused. It wasn't overdone. I think there was a little bit more than that, but it blended in so seamlessly yeah. that it wasn't. Yeah, just there was only out. two times that I was aware of it. Right. That I noted. Oh, here's a soundtrack. More than anything else, I noticed the absence of sound, yeah. which I think you should. And this is why I was saying about it being a thinking person's movie, or at least that's what I got from it because watching it, listening to it, I spent. A portion of my brain power was <clears throat> concentrating on like what it would be like to not be able to make a sound. Yeah. To not, or, or you know, having that be a yeah a, a crucial part of your survival and existence. What would you do differently? Well, yeah, and that's that's what actually got me into it and made me enjoy it so much because I couldn't help but put myself there with them. Right. And it's like, how much would this suck? <laughs> like, how hard would this be? And, yeah. like, what a nightmare. Like, it was horror to me. There were so many things going on in there. And once it really begins, once the the story definitely picks up steam, I think. Yeah. Um, and once it starts, it doesn't really relent. At least that's how it felt. Being right. into the movie, uh, being invested in it. Uh, when things start to go downhill or maybe spiral out of control or whatever happens or however it comes to happen, like it just uh -huh. keeps ratcheting it up right. as far as the, the intensity, I guess, yeah. of the situation. Because again, this is another one of those movies where it's not just flat out horror per se. Right. It's tension driven and it's the fear of what might happen as opposed to what's happening on screen per se. Right. Um, there are a few jump scares in there, but they're not over overproduced. Yeah, jump they weren't scares. overdone. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it made. It didn't sense. rely on that for no, sure. No, it did not. No, it didn't. So. I think it was just man those tense moments. Yeah. Where you're sitting there and you're like with them, you're almost holding your breath along with them. Yeah. Because it's like, oh my gosh, you're breathing too loud. You're, you know, don't move. You're, you know, you feel like even if you make one little tiny movement, like this thing is going to hear you. So, another portion of my brain, though, was spent on like, well, some of this is just for effect and this wouldn't really happen in nature. Okay. I had a little problem with suspension of disbelief throughout. Minor, absolutely minor. Okay. And it's just because I have to pick things apart or whatever. Like what? Where did they keep getting the sand from? So oh. in this, well, I just, all you have to do because we've seen a few movies in the last year that were that this reminded me of the other ones we'd seen. Okay. Where something's happened and a family is stuck out living very rural mm -hmm. I think all you have to do all day long is your everyday survival stuff there's no they, TV, they live by there's a no river. computer there's they live no... by a river, that's where they're getting their sand okay but then where, cause all... I mean when the river showed up then I'm like okay well this is probably where they're getting it yeah, from. all they have to do is work all day long and make sure everything is just right in case of emergency that's all yeah. you have to do okay um 
But, like I said, that was the problem of what was distracting her or what I was thinking about a little bit while well, watching that's it. that's too bad. No, I, I mean, it's, well, no, it's fun because a movie makes me think it's doing its job. Okay. That, that's what I, so then, but also I'm thinking about nature, you know, don't they ever get rain here? Don't they ever get, you know, it would have been washed away. Your whole path would be washed away. You'd have to do it. Like you said, it would be a continuous yeah. maintaining of your survival mechanisms. Right. Um definitely see the importance of having a plan having an idea having being prepared yeah i enjoyed that part um seeing what they did in and around the house you know for emergency they did have plans yeah um uh it was fun to me also fun i guess is the right word because i was looking around and there was i felt like the movie was layered enough with the background and things that were going on that they didn't spell everything out for you that you could right. look at them and see, oh, well, this is why this is, or this is going to become important later. Or anytime I can pick up things that are foreshadowing in a movie right. or whatever, that's good. Like nails? I, <laughs> uh, I was biting my nails. No. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's a horrible, horrible scene involving was, a nail. I was not thinking about that, but... Uh. Uh, um, I've been there, done that, so, so I was just I. cringing. So and, have I. Oh, for the, God's sake. The, the other mild distraction was the medical supplies that they had. And I keep saying distraction. It shouldn't be a distraction, but I can't help think like, hey, we well, sell that in our store. Oh. That's available for 25 cents, as, you know, this patch. Oh, okay. And, okay. Yeah, I don't know. Anyhow. Um, acting. Great. Script. I well, there wasn't a lot of script, but I mean it was great okay. as far as I'm concerned. So I guess it so. was a simple story because it's about the, it's about surviving in this world. It's not you know didn't right. have a big dramatic plot line or anything. And it drops you right in there. You post, yeah. I'm gonna say I mean, post-apocalyptic, the, the, but the script, the quite. plot. Uh, I mean, aside from just family survival, um, something happens early on. Um, that kind of sets the tone for how the characters are feeling later. Right. So, I mean, there is a, quote, story. I guess what I'm thinking then from the arguably horror end of it or whatever is, you don't get an explanation of where right. these creatures came from. Oh, or yeah, what you it get is. nothing. You get zero. You, not zero. Not zero. Because, well, again, if you were paying attention of, in the background. A little bit of newspaper Articles here and, and there. Stuff. Things that you needed to read or pick up on. Yeah. yeah. Small things. But I mean, and I finally believe after the movie, he mentioned that it was an alien uh, right. invasion. I assume, arguably. But I mean, yeah, that's the assumption you would make, <laughs> especially when you see the uh, the creatures themselves. What did you think about them? Um, they were kind of cool. Kind of cool. Okay. Yeah. Well, I thought it was a great creature, creature effects, mm-hmm. and so on. That was super, but. It was very similar to some we've seen before, but but that's all right. Yeah, um, but I guess my my thing was I going to be. I almost didn't want to see that much of them. Like it was oh, kind of cool when you that's... were just getting those flashes of them. Yeah. And I, and I know I'm contradicting myself. I was gonna say. Yeah, not too long ago we saw something where I was super happy that it gave us a really good close up look of what the creature was. Yeah, that's been your complaint before Cause too. I, yeah, because I don't always like. Um, yeah. I don't always like um, to just see little blurry flashes of them and never see them. So, but apparently, some... sometimes I don't like to see the whole thing either. <laughs> but no, no, it was fine. No, so it... somewhere between signs and leprechaun. <laughs> okay. I mean, you know, in signs. <laughs> did you see enough of the aliens in signs? Right. Who's honking? Yes? I don't know. Oh, whoops. Well, she's allowed to do that. Okay. That was crazy. All right. Two. Two were able to turn left there, and those people Just like almost hit her. Yeah, okay. almost ran her off the road. All right. While well, they honked at her, that's awesome. Signs? Yes, it's overcrowded here. We yeah, I guess I guess I take that back. It's it's good that we saw the whole thing, um, because yeah, it's good to see what you're dealing with. I guess. Well, I guess my question yeah, was. I think there's something I didn't like about the creatures. Maybe that's why I'm saying that. Okay. So yeah, I'm gonna stick to my yes. I do like to see the whole creature. Okay. Yeah. All right. I guess my my problem with it was then 
if uh, and you're thinking of not leprechaun you're thinking of that other one what was it called the ritual Oh, the ritual? That crazy beast that was in the, that god that they were worshipping. Oh, well, that's... That I, came out and you got to see it in all of its glory. I, I, I hadn't thought of that one. I was actually thinking of Leprechaun, but I was thinking about oh, your complaint leprechaun, about the shaky cam. Like, Leprechaun Origins. Not leprechaun, leprechaun Origins. They never showed what the thing really looked like every time you Only saw it. Only ever got blurry. Yeah, it was blurry and they put a vibration effect on it and that was lame. Okay. Fail. Uh, in this, my concern then became other things that it wasn't just a sound based creature I would expect other heightened senses and so on right now I'm also worrying about star travel how did they get here oh there's <laughs> so many questions so yeah very many questions but that's not what it's about that's not it this is mo- so yeah. the movie we saw if you had to give it a number what number would you give it oh that's a hard one is it kind of okay because I want to go real high okay probably a four and a half Okay. Um, I don't know. I would say a solid four, maybe even okay. a four and a half. Uh, yeah, because again, using the criteria that we've established some time back, like for what would we improve in it, what would we do to change it to make right. it a five if it isn't a five, uh, I would be hard pressed. Um, I could probably, we're fresh out of seeing the movie, so give it another day or so and maybe I could come up with yeah. something that I might try to improve but yeah. fresh out of seeing it I think it was great absolutely uh, yeah worth the yeah that's worth, the problem talking the, about it right after like tomorrow if you ask me again I might have something different to say well you may have something I'm not going to like it any thing. less but. okay I gotcha so you said it's definitely worth checking out. Definitely worth checking out. I mean, like I said, it's been out a little while now. At this point, we actually got a two-for-one ticket, so yeah, that's why we went out on Memorial Day to see it in the theater. Yeah. Um, this is a side note. Doesn't really go on the podcast necessarily. Would you like a Starbucks? Oh, um, yeah, but I better not. Okay, never mind then. Why so, did you want one? No, it's fine. So anyhow. Uh, getting back to our final thoughts on A Quiet Place. Did you have to see it in the theater? No, I don't think so. Okay, because that was one of the things they pushed yeah, during the understand. ad campaign. Yeah, that's nuts. Only because I think they wanted you to experience those cringeworthy scenes with everybody else. I There's guess. nothing quite like a whole theater full of people going, ah! All at the same time. Uh, yeah, I don't enjoy that. Oh, okay. Well, that's uh, that's fine then. We didn't see. I don't yell. Li- I don't yell loud or sigh or do anything loud in the movie theater. So <laughs> it's annoying when so it's annoying when other people. I don't do. know. Okay. But yeah, it did say. I noticed that that was part of its ad campaign. Like, you, oh, you have to see this in a full movie theater. Yeah. And all I could think of was, wait, it's called a quiet place. Silence <laughs> is, is a big thing. Right. <laughs> Why would I want to watch it with a hundred other people <laughs> munching on their popcorn, sucking on their sodas, and or crinkling their wrappers, trying to control their children? Yeah. Yeah. Chit chatting on their phone. Like, why in the world would I want to spoil it? Well, we saw it in a nearly, I won't say nearly deserted. There were actually a few people. No, there there was quite a few people. Yeah. But we were all the way up in the front. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, having said that, though, I think the intense feelings that I had watching this Uh feelings of claustrophobia and dread. Yeah. Um, specific scenes I'm thinking about. Yeah, exactly. So we've often said movies that make us feel something. Yeah. We're looking for that movie that made us feel. This one I think did. I'm not. I, I do need to think about the rewatchability. I think there's rewatchability there. I, I'm not sure. I think so. Think so. I think so too. I think so. Yeah. I think so. Just if, if nothing else, to see Emily Blunt. Uh, that's always a treasure. Yes. Yes. I was going to say something about her being ready now to fight uh, time-traveling aliens after this. <laughs> now that she's yeah. got her chops down, though. Yeah. Um, well, depends on how this one worked out, actually, for her. But anyhow. Uh, she's great. I think that is our review of 
a quiet place. I'd say there's a lot to talk about garbage in, garbage out, but really all we've watched is more Ripper Street, so. Oh, we'll get to that fault. in a minute. That's all your fault. How do I shut this off? Uh, push the button that says stop. The stop button? Yeah. And that makes sense. Yeah. So a little bit of time has passed since we recorded that. Yeah. So, uh, your feelings change at all? Do you? I, I don't think so. Any nothing else that you can think of that's going to knock it up to a five for you, or anything you would modify or make different or um, do differently? No, I still really liked it a lot, and I think I would still stick with a somewhere between a four and four a five, and four, four okay. and a half, or right. something. And John Krasinski, I guess, is the name we could not remember for. Okay. It's a shame that we're just addressing him as. Emily Blunt's husband. <laughs> well, were we calling him the, the writer, director, writer, or director, actor? and so on, yeah. Um, but at any rate. Yeah, again, it was really well done. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say that somebody I know who saw it and thought it was stupid um, is a big Deadpool fan. <laughs> Well, I feel vindicated or justified <laughs> in my comparison Just saying. of one or the other. Wait, <laughs> you weren't talking about me, were you? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Did you think The Quiet Place was stupid? No, no, no. no. Okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> I enough, had to throw that in there. Enough with this silliness. Uh, let's get on with uh, garbage in, garbage out. Actually, that was the one mistake that I made last week. I believe I referred to are laid to rest as garbage in, garbage out throughout the episode. Also. Oh my gosh, usually I catch when you say that. Usually you do, you didn't this time. But Oops. anyhow. That's alright. Not a whole heck of a lot to cover for garbage in, garbage out since we've been powering through yeah. Ripper Street. Yeah. Uh, as much as I like season one, I think I like season two better. Okay. Season three took it in a different and it's, darker direction. Yeah, it's even very, it's different. Darker. Mm-hmm. Um, not saying I didn't like it, but uh, ooh, waiting to see how that ends, and can't wait for season four and five. The seasons, or rather, the the show has wrapped up, I believe. So. Yep. Um, six hour episodes to go for. The season four and Hopefully. six episodes for season five. Hopefully it's one of those that they knew when it was going to end, so they were able to write an ending. And didn't leave you hanging? Yeah. Hopefully that's the case. I hope so. All right. Well. Anyway, I highly recommend it. You have to have been reading something or doing something else because you haven't just been watching that and haven't been playing Breath of the Wild lately, so. I know. So you're asking me what I've been reading? Yes. Oh. Well, I've been reading one of my Dresden Files books. Yeah? By Jim Butcher. Yeah? Um, <laughs> you hit a pregnant pause here. Did you uh, have something more to add, or is this a book that you've read maybe uh, or started a couple of times before? I... <laughs> Yeah, it's the third time reading it. Okay. Um, Not to put you on the spot or but yeah, anything. Yeah, no, I'm finally sticking to it. Okay. Well, it's, it's just it's things night. have gotten away. And yeah. you've it's a good good story, a good author. A I good... only pause because I keep calling it the wrong thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, you put me on the spot. I didn't know I was going to talk about it. Okay. I'm going to wait. Jeez, I'm finding every single one of them but the one. And I look over here, and this one is called White Night. So I'm like, does that say Winter? Winter Night? It's not what I'm reading. It's so annoying. But yes, it's titled Summer Night. Okay. And uh, it's actually about the Winter Night being murdered, so that's why I get it kind of... Uh, okay. Like, is this named after the... I'm not sure which night it's named after. Night, of course, K N I G H T. I see. Yeah. All right. Well. You don't care about all that. Okay. I do, but. 
Oh. Our listeners probably don't. So anyhow. Well, uh, I recommend you read them, actually. Okay, well, I Yeah, the Dresden, would. Fa- Harry Dresden is a great character if you've only seen the TV show. I was I'm just going to so say, sorry. if you're calling it Dresden Files, you got to be specific because this is pretty far from... Yeah, I'm talking about the novels, not that god-awful TV show. I don't know who that was. <laughs> <laughs> and Bob the Skull is, in fact, a skull. He doesn't walk around as a person. All right. They did everything wrong with that TV show. <laughs> Speaking of shows getting canceled. Indeed. Should have been canceled after they had the idea. Oh, ouch. All right. Well, I think we're going to forego our crawling chaos. It was bad, was it not? I don't think we got more than a couple of episodes in before it was. I had lost interest. If somebody could pick up the Dresden Files and do it based on the books, Mm -hmm. that would be great. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, get Harry right, get his personality right, get his apartment right, get Bob the Skull right. Just please get it freaking right. (laughs) I don't know what they were thinking. I don't know. Anyway. Anyhow, like I said, I believe we're going to forego forego forgo our crawling chaos this week. Why you don't have one? I don't have one picked out oh. and written down here to uh, to jump right into. Well, then let's do a, a part 2 of last week's crawling chaos and you could insert uh, some other um, terrifying animal sounds. <laughs> okay. Because it's really funny cuz last week after we talked about the sounds that a moose will make that sounds really scary. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's something that sounds even scarier. Well, Maybe. It depends on who who you are. I was going to say, if you're from Michigan or parts where I am, you'll know that a a puma or a a wildcat makes some god-awful, horrific sounds like a woman screaming. Yeah, and and it was right after we talked about the moose and released our show... Then all of a sudden, these these two links um, screaming at each other was all over the internet, all over the news and stuff. So yeah. I thought that was really funny. Mm-hmm. But um, maybe we'll just insert those sounds here. This is so freaking cool. Who, who runs into this? Sounds good. That'll be our crawling chaos. All right. I think we killed it. Yeah. Thanks for listening. (laughs)